learning to read. I found Grandad in his shed making a shelf for Granny. What does that say? A piece of wood had some numbers written on it. It says 2 plus 2. Why couldn't you read it, Grandad? I left my glasses up in the house. What did you say it said? 2 plus 2. Oh. Grandad paused as if he wanted to ask something else. When you were little, I asked him, did you have to go to school and learn to read? Schools hadn't been invented, so as soon as I could walk, my mother made me go to work selling newspapers. But that's cruel. First day, I couldn't sell a single paper, so I taught myself to read. I looked at the front page and shouted, Lion tamer, eaten by his own lion. Boy bites shark at Napanel baths. Tourist falls into volcano on top of Mount Eden. Read all about it. What happens? Everyone bought my papers. Next day, I sold twice as many. Cow eats farmer in Dunedin, I shouted. Whale squashes car in Wellington. Giant rabbit chases policeman through Christchurch. Read all about it. People were in such a hurry to read the paper, they didn't wait for their change. My pockets were so full, my pants kept falling down. I soon had six sacks of money under my bed. I taught myself arithmetic one night. The next night, I taught myself to write. The third night, I built my first wheelbarrow, took all my money to the bank. On my fifth birthday, somebody invented the first school. Did you like it? I'd already taught myself to read and write and do sums, and I learned everything else by playtime. They took me out of the top class and put me with the little kids who had just started that morning. By home time, I passed all the exams and was back at the top of the school. What did they do? They made me a teacher. I taught so fast, by playtime the kids knew how to read and write and do sums. By lunchtime they knew everything else and were ready to go home. The other teachers were furious. What happened? They gave me the sack. I was too scared to tell mum and I ran away to the sea and was captured by pirates. They made me walk the plank, so I fell into the water where a shark bit off one hand and one leg. I made a hook for my hand and a wooden leg, beat the pirates, and went home just in time for my sixth birthday. My mother was delighted when I took off my wooden leg stuffed full of pirate gold. But you've got both legs and hands now. I grew new ones. My mother said a policeman was coming to take me back to school, so I taught myself to swim. That night I was in South America. You swam all that way in one day. The wind was with me. I taught myself to play poker in one hour gold mine. Filled a ship with treasure and sailed back to New Zealand. All that gold was so heavy we sailed very slowly. I got home just in time for my seventh birthday. My mother was so pleased with the gold but she said I had to go to school and locked me in the back shed for the teachers to collect in the morning. That night I dug a hole through the middle of the earth and came out in China, where I taught the emperor and the empress the haka, and they gave me a ruby as big as an apple, and sent me home on a junk for my eighth birthday. Is your mother pleased? She was pleased with the ruby, but said the teachers were hunting me with a bloodhound. Bloodhound? They were serious about school in those days. When I heard the bloodhound bang, I taught myself to fly. Grandad flapped his arms, and I took off for India. There I taught the Raja to play footy, gave me a square emerald out of his turban, and told his favourite elephant to bring me home. Jumbo swam overarm from India just in time for my ninth birthday. He ate a whole pavlova, blew out the candles on my cake, shook hands with his trunk, and swam back to India. On my tenth birthday, I set the square emerald in a silver ring and gave it to your grandmother. Then we got engaged. Are the teachers still looking for you? In those days, you left school at ten. Grandad, why do I have to go to school? Grandad looked at a bit of wood for Granny's shelf again. What's two and two? he asked. Two and two makes four. Thanks. Grandad, you don't know how to add two and two? I do so. Two and two makes four. I just told you that. What's three twos, Grandad? He pretended he didn't hear. How about nicking up to the house? and asking Granny if she's going to give us a cup of tea. Granny, I asked, does Grandad know how to add? Your grandfather wouldn't learn his tables, so he can't multiply to save himself. He's no good at takeaways, and he's useless at long division. Did he learn to read? Mm, not properly. But he reads the paper. He pretends. 
I read it to him at breakfast. Granny, did Grandad give you an emerald ring? Hmm, I don't remember. Have a look in the brass box on my dressing table. The one I keep my beads in. I climbed on Granny and Grandad's bed. Looked in the brass box. It was a silver ring with a square green stone. I stared into it. Something moved. I stared harder. Saw an elephant swimming overarm with a boy sitting on his head. Over the splash of waves, I heard the elephant call the boy Jack. And he called the elephant Jumbo. Then I must have slept because Granny was shaking my shoulder. The brass box was back on her dressing table. Come on, she said. I've made a cup of tea.